We have to get on uh, in our uh, remorter, reporter's mode. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I did have a lot of nervousness and mm -hmm. anxiousness, but I, I knew I needed to come. And that's why landing was so interesting to me mm -hmm. because I know there's chaos and I expected chaos. And yet it was immediately seeing just everyday people that made me really realize this is just other people just like mm -hmm. us. And, yeah. and they're just human beings getting through the day. That's our, our main job because, uh, uh, th I mean, there are news reports here and there and uh, uh, on TV, on the papers, but uh, I, I think uh, from that people, when they read it or when they saw the report, you get left with the feeling of being overwhelmed and that, you know, hopeless, it, there's nothing I can do. So hopefully that's where we kind of uh, change that perception a little bit and where it becomes, yeah, you know, here, look at this regular person mm -hmm. just like you. And, and, and I think uh, we're pretty <laughs> regular to start with, so, uh, you know, we, we you know, we're nothing special, mm -hmm. uh, so we're just connecting regular people to regular people through some regular people. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably our best bet is going to be yeah. Yeah, that and maybe these right here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, this area is safe. Uh huh. Uh, from Gaga, Farshama, Trajan, Trajan. Those are safe. Yeah. The problem is here. Mm -hmm. Here. And I heard of an attack in uh, Blintin. Yeah, Blintin. Blintin. And also, you know, that's that's. And those beta, right? Also, they're late. Yeah, there was beta also is not safe. You know, that's. You know, here, on the way, that's their base. Their base. That's where they're. Yeah. Where is that? Even. Yeah. Their base. Beta also is not safe. The situation has since uh, the stop of the rainy season, since that means since uh, the end of uh, September, been going uh, downhill. Throughout Eastern Chad, there has been a uh, militarization taking place. Uh, with uh, larger and bigger presence of military actors in in the zones, uh, you should def definitely not drive around uh, in a in a four-wheel drive in the in the northern part of eastern Chad right now. Meaning, uh, especially around Gereda, Iriba, Amzor, Biltin, and towards Bahai because that is exactly where there has been a lot of combat between the Chadian army and the Chadian rebel movement. So that will definitely not be advisable. We have had, uh, at this moment, uh, as of 12th of December, we had the car number 55 being stolen by the humanitarian agencies, from, from humanitarian agencies. Recently, just four days ago, Friday and Saturday, the 15th and 16th of December, <clears throat> there was again a new wave of attacks around Kuku Angarana in the southeast of the country. Um, and there were four, there were estimation of 30 people killed, of which four are refugees. They were not killed in the camps, they were killed <clears throat> when they were attending to their fields nearby. But this is a very worrying uh, sign, and we are afraid of that, that the, this insecurity and militarization will slowly eat itself towards these safe havens that have been created. And that, that, is, that is extremely worrying.
uh, standing with them, very important. Mm. And uh, I, I think uh, hopefully through all of this, what, what comes out is that people see that uh, just the urgent need to do something about this, you know. Uh, it's been going on for three years and, and that we're still hearing that it's getting in worse and worse. It, it, I, you know, it's mind-blowing and, and, um, and that the, it, the complexity of it and the politics of it take, you know, precedence over just the, the yeah. individual life, you know, each person, the value of each person. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's sad. A sad reality, but uh, I, I think uh, that we can change it if enough of us decide to do it. And here at the beginning of a new century, mm -hmm. the first genocide, to mm -hmm. really stand up. I mean, that's what I kept thinking, you know, as a kid. I kept saying, how did the world let this happen? Mm -hmm. How? And so when this opportunity now was here, and you said, do you want to come along this time? It's like, mm -hmm. how could I say no when my whole childhood I was asking that question? Mm -hmm. And I think we do. I think we really have a chance to really make a difference just person to person. Mm. That's the void that, that this I act is filling.